last lecture we had seen how to derive the expressions for the generated electromagnetic forces and we found that in order to derive those expressions we need to know how to express the field energy in terms of the excitation systems that are there whether it is a single coil or whether there are more than one coils we need to know how to write down the expression for field energy and once we know the expression for field energy then we get an expression for the rate of change of field energy with respect to time and we use that we separate that out from the applied electrical input V into I and uh, that then enables us to get an expression for the generated forces in the electromechanical system. We saw that the field energy W f can be written in a vector form using vectors for the various uh, excitations that are given into the system. So, if I is a vector then half I transpose inductance matrix multiplied by I, where I is a vector of flow of input currents I 1, I 2 etcetera may be up to i n. This is for the case of a linear system and we then said that before we go ahead with the um, derivation of various expressions for electrical machines in the linear magnetic domain, let us briefly pause and look at what the expressions will be if the magnetic system is not linear. <coughs> and we started looking at the nonlinear magnetic systems, magnetic circuit, nonlinear magnetics, let us say, and they are then characterized by a relation between current and flux linkage. Let us consider a single excitation I and a flux linkage psi then the relationship between them is not linear and is a nonlinear curve. Had it been a linear system, the curve would have been maybe something like this, the straight line. Whereas now, if we are going to look at nonlinear magnetics, this curve is not a straight line and it bends over that means that as you go to values of higher and higher flux linkages you require a flow of current i which is more than what you would have required to increase the flux in the lower levels of flux linkage so that is what is meant by this and while looking at the expression for field energy if we if we say that you have a coil with an applied voltage V and a current that is flowing in I with no mechanical output and no resistance, which means resistance loss dissipation is 0, mechanical output power is 0, then all the electrical energy that is supplied goes towards increasing or decreasing the magnetic field and therefore, if we are going to write V equals d psi by d t, then input power V into I is I into d psi by d t and which is nothing but the rate of change of magnetic field energy with respect to time and we can write therefore, d w f in the differential form 
this expression can be converted to the differential form which says that d w f is equal to i d psi. So, if you then want to get the expression or for the field energy, you then need to integrate this expression d w f is a small change in the field energy is given by i into d psi. And if you want to find out the total field energy for a given current flowing, which means that you, you, you uh, enable the linkage to go from maybe 0 to some value, then the field energy is given by the integral of this expression i d psi going from 0, where psi goes from 0 to some capital value psi. So, if this is your final flux linkage psi, this integration would then give you this area So, that area it represents the field energy. Let us remove this line, no longer necessary. <coughs> this is the field energy and we saw yesterday in the last uh, uh, in the last lecture, we can define another term which is then called as the co energy, which we can call as W c the co energy is given by the expression psi d i or rather a small change in the co energy d w c is given by the expression psi d i and therefore, co energy is then up sorry d w c is then psi d i and then the integral w c is given by integral of psi d i going from 0 to some final current i. And by the very form of this expression, one can understand that this integral psi d i would result in this area. A small differential d i integrated from 0 to this value of i would then give this area and therefore, that area is field energy w f and this area represents the co energy w c. We assume in drawing this figure that the flux linkage capital psi results due to flow of current i. That means, at this current you get this flux linkage. So, obviously, from this graph from the picture that we have drawn one can see that w c plus w f is equal to psi multiplied by i. That is the total area of this rectangle that we have is psi multiplied by i. That is divided into two parts by this nonlinear curve, which is field energy and co energy. These two terms are useful to us in deriving expressions for the mechanical work done and mechanical forces. Let us see how that can be done. Initially, when we wrote down the expression, we said that no resistance and no mechanical output is there. Let us retain this no resistance, but now if mechanical output is allowed in the system, then what we would have is d w f by d t, which is the rate at which field energy is increasing is then given by V into I, which is the electrical input that we are giving minus mechanical power. 
because from the total electrical input that you give something goes away as mechanical output then it is a remaining that goes towards the field energy. So, this expression does indeed make sense and we can then write this as this is V into I minus. Now, let us look at a system which has a linear displacement which is what we started out with in the beginning and you can write that therefore, as the force that is developed F multiplied by force into the velocity force multiplied by the velocity gives you the mechanical output and therefore, one can write that as F into d x by d t. We also know that voltage you are applying a voltage here and this voltage because you are applying directly across this loop this voltage has to be equal to the induced E m f and this induced E m f by definition we know should be equal to d psi by d t and therefore, voltage is equal to d psi by d t and when you substitute this what you get is d w f by d t is equal to i into d psi by d t minus f into d x by d t. Now, this expression since all are differentiations with respect to time one can write it in the differential form as d w f equals i d psi minus f into d x. Now, let us look at this graph once again or maybe we will draw it once again here. This is your axis for i and here you have psi. <coughs> now, if we represent the relationship between psi and i as this line, this line is obviously valid for some value of x say x naught right. If the value of x is going to change then you would get some other curve at another value x 1. So, obviously, here we have drawn the curve x 1 such that for the same current i this location x 1 gives rise to a flux linkage that is lower than the at the position x naught it could have been also the other way around it is just arbitrarily we have chosen x naught and x 1. Essentially, we are saying then that the energy in the field depends not only on how much flux linkage is there, because it represents the area above this curve. So, for a given flux linkage some let us call that as psi 1 for a given flux linkage the area above the curve obviously, now depends upon where the curve is. If it is this curve then you are talking about this area, if it is this curve then it is that area plus what is there here. Therefore, the field energy W f then depends upon we can write this as a function of psi as well as x. If x is going to change then this curve itself changes, if flux linkage is going to change then we are shifting this value at which we are computing the field energy and therefore, this area obviously, is going to change. So, if this is the relationship, if this is the dependency of W f, 
then we know from our elementary understanding of differentiation that a differential change in W f can then be written as the partial derivative of W f with respect to psi multiplied by d psi. This partial derivative being evaluated from this expression by keeping x constant plus the partial derivative of W f with respect to x multiplied by d x, this partial derivative being evaluated keeping psi constant. This is a general expression if a function is going to depend on a variable 1 and a variable 2, then a small change in this w f can then be written as the derivative with respect to one variable keeping the other fixed and the derivative res with respect to the other variable keeping the first one fixed. But then the other expression also gives us the same thing and therefore, by looking at the expression for d w f from here as well as here, we can conclude that the this variable i must be given by dou w f by dou psi keeping x constant and then the force is given by minus of dou w f by dou x keeping psi constant. So, if we know what is the expression for the field energy and that expression is given in terms of flux linkage and the displacement, then what this says is that we can find out the mechanical force exerted by differentiating this expression with respect to x while keeping the flux linkage fixed during the differentiation. If this is going to be a system which is going to rotate, then obviously, instead of f d x, you would have torque into d theta and therefore, here you would have dou w f by dou theta keeping psi constant and therefore, you would land up with the expression torque is equal to minus dou w f by dou theta keeping psi constant. So, in this manner then if you have an expression for field energy in terms of the two variables psi and x, one can find out how much force is going to be developed or how much torque is going to be developed. <laughs> Similar expressions can be derived based on co energy. We have seen that co energy is given by psi into i minus field energy, that is the expression we have seen here W c plus W f is equal to psi into i. Indeed, we can recall again that the sum of area above the curve and sum of area below the curve together give this rectangular area, which obviously has to be equal to psi into i. And therefore, d w c, a small change in w c can be written as psi into d i plus i into d psi minus d w f <coughs> and from our earlier expressions, we already know what d w f by d t is or d w f is. So, we substitute this expression there and which results in psi d i plus i d psi minus i d psi plus f d x. So, these two terms obviously cancel out. So, you get 
psi d i plus f d x is your d w c. Now, again if you look at w c which is this area Now, if you choose the curve x 1, it is this area. If you choose the curve x naught determined by x naught, then you have to add this additional area in order to determine <coughs> w c. So, obviously, now w c depends upon at what value of i you are going to evaluate w c and at the same time which curve you are going to use. So, in a similar manner as before, we can write w c to be a function of to be a function of i as well as x. And since we know that it is a function of two variables i and x, we can also write a change in this function can be written as do w c by do i keeping x constant multiplied by d i plus do w c by do x keeping i constant multiplied by d x. And these two expressions have to be the same because both represent differential changes in the co energy and therefore, by comparing these two what we can say is that psi is equal to do w c by do i keeping x constant and force is equal to do w c by do x keeping i constant. Which means that if you go through the field energy route one can evaluate force as minus of change of field energy with respect to x keeping psi constant or if you go through the co energy route then force can be evaluated as the rate of the, the change of uh, the differential of co energy with respect to x keeping i constant. Now, both these must yield the same answer the same expression which one you will use depends upon which is more easier for you to handle and these two should give the same expressions. Now, it is important to understand that keeping psi constant or keeping i constant here does not have anything to do with the physical system attempting to keep psi or i fixed. It is just a requirement for differentiation of w c or w i and has nothing to do with the physical system. So, let us take an example to see how this can be done. <coughs> For example, let us look at our linear system which we started in the beginning. You had a plunger and a coil, this was going to move inside if you excite it. And we know that in this case, because there is only one excitation and this bar is going to move therefore, inductance will change with respect to the position x. We know that the field energy is given by half L as a function of x multiplied by i square that is the expression for field energy. <coughs> and our expression that we have derived for the mechanical force says that field energy is the rate of change of w f with respect to x while keeping psi constant. And we know that psi is equal to inductance multiplied by the flow of i and therefore, we can substitute in this expression in terms of psi or i is equal to psi divided by L of x. So, we substitute this there which means w f is equal to 
half of L x multiplied by i square, i square is psi square divided by L square, which means this is half of psi square divided by uh, L x. <coughs> and now we need to take the derivative of this with respect to x keeping psi constant and the force is the negative of that expression. So, let us do it here. So, force is equal to minus do w f by do x keeping psi constant which is minus do by do x of psi square by 2 into 1 over L of x from the earlier expression and psi is kept constant during the differentiation and therefore, this part can be taken out. So, you have minus psi square by 2 into dou by dou x of 1 over L x, which is nothing but minus psi square by 2 and the derivative dou by dou x of 1 over L x is minus of 1 over L square x multiplied by d L by d x. We write it as derivative with respect to x, because L is a function only of x, there is only a single variable function and therefore, we do not write dou L by dou x, it is d L by d x, which therefore, is psi square by L square of x into d L by d x by 2. And we know that psi equals L of x into i and therefore, psi square is L square of x into i squared. So, we substitute that here and you get this is half of i square into d L by d x. And if you remember, look back on our earlier lectures, the force that we derived for the singly excited linear motion system is the same expression. Right? So, this shows that one can get the expression for force from the field energy in this manner. <coughs> now, how about the other expression? We have also said you can derive the force from the co-energy expression and the co-energy expression says that force is obtained as dou w c by dou x keeping i constant. And in this case w c, the system we are looking at now is a linear system, linear in i and psi, I mean a linear relationship between i and psi. We are expressing it in terms of an inductance coefficient and saying that the inductance coefficient is a function only of displacement and therefore, if it is only a function of displacement, this curve will be a straight line for a given position x. If the position x is going to change, then you might get another straight line for some other displacement. So, if you now consider this curve for a linear magnetic system and you look at an expre, uh, uh, um, a value of psi here and a corresponding value of i. Now, you see that this the rectangle psi i is 
obviously divided into two halves by the diagonal of this rectangle which is this curve. And therefore, because it is a diagonal of this rectangle the area above the curve must be equal to the area below the curve which means that in this case W f must be equal to W c. And therefore, W c is also equal to half of L x into i square. In this case therefore, it is simple and therefore, if you want to now evaluate the force, force is nothing but dou w c by dou x keeping i constant, i is constant. So, keep it out of the differentiation process and therefore, force is straight away half of i square d l by d x. So, we get this in a single step if you use the co energy function through this route. Therefore, one can use energy or co energy in order to find out the expression for force. Let us do one more example to illustrate the process. Let us say that we have a system which is a rotational system where the relationship between i and psi is described in this manner alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos of 2 times theta multiplied by psi to the power of 1.0. Now, the expressions the system that we considered earlier is a magnetically linear system whereas, what we are looking at now is a magnetically non-linear system and in this case we want to find out the expression for force. <coughs> As before we can use either the field energy or the field co-energy. So, let us do using both of them. Now, the field energy W f if you would recall is given by the integral i d psi. Now, this expression only gives us the relationship between i and psi it does not give you the field energy directly. In the earlier example we started out with the expression for the field energy. Now, you have to determine the field energy given this expression and therefore, first do an integration i d psi. So, let us say this goes from 0 to some value capital psi which is integral from 0 to psi substitute for i from this expression. So, this is alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta multiplied by psi to the power of 1.6 d psi <coughs> which is now in this integration psi is the only thing that is going to change. So, the angle is fixed. So, we can take this out of the integration. So, this then becomes alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta multiplied by psi to the power of integral of psi to the power of 1.6 d psi is psi to the power of 1.6 plus 1 that is 2.6 divided by 2.6 going from 0 to capital psi. And obviously, at the lower limit this function reduces to 0 because you are multiplying by 0 and therefore, one can write down this expression as psi to the power of 2.6 by 2.6. In this case what we are interested in determining is the torque T and the torque T is given by minus of dou W f by dou theta keeping psi constant. So, this is minus of dou by dou theta of this expression keeping 
psi constant. So, psi is constant it may be taken out of the derivative and therefore, this is nothing but psi to the power of 2.6 by 2.6 <coughs> multiplied by the derivative of this term. The derivative of this term is minus of alpha 1, the derivative of cos is sin 2 theta multiplied by 2 and uh, cos is sin. So, this then becomes plus, but then you have a negative sign outside here. So, that negative sign continues to remain. So, what you have is minus of 2 alpha 1 sin 2 theta multiplied by psi to the power of 2.6 divided by 2.6 is the expression for the generated electromagnetic torque T. <coughs> One can do this using the co-energy root. So, let us do that also. The co energy just like what we have done here, we have first determined the expression for the field energy. So, just like that we need to determine what is co energy first. Co energy is given by integral of psi d i. <coughs> and therefore, we need to get an expression for psi here. This is integral going from some 0 to i. Psi is given by i to the power of 1 by 1.6 divided by alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta to the power of 1 by 1.6. That is, we are converting this expression writing psi in terms of i multiplied by d i. <coughs> in this integration again angle is kept fixed. So, that can be taken out of the differentiation. So, you get 1 by alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta to the power of 1 by 1.6 multiplied by i to the power of 1 by 1.6 integral of that. So, 1 by 1.6 plus 1 that becomes 2.6 by 1.6 divided by the same exponent. So, 2.6 by 1.6. This is your expression going from 0 to i and since at the lower limit it is 0, the expression obviously is 0. So, we replace the upper limit here. So, this is your expression for W c and in order to derive the expression for the torque, we see that the torque is given by do W c by do theta. This is a an expression for the force for a linear system for a rotational system it would be dou w c by dou theta. And so, you need to differentiate this expression with respect to the angle keeping i constant which means this term is kept constant. So, the torque is then i to the power of 2.6 by 1.6 divided by 2.6 by 1.6 multiplied by d by d theta of alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta to the power of minus 1 by 1.6. So, we can write this as i to the power of 2.6 by 1.6 divided by 2.6 by 
into alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta to the power of minus 2.6 by 1.6 multiplied by minus 1 by 1.6. So, let us now simplify that expression. Let us simplify this expression. What we have is torque we have obtained as minus 1 by 1.6 multiplied by i to the power of 2.6 by 1.6 divided by 2.6 by 1.6 multiplied by 1 by alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta to the power of 2.6 by 1.6. When you take the di differentiation, you need to differentiate this term as well. So, this term gives you the differential of cos is sin minus sin. So, alpha 1 sin 2 theta multiplied by 2 and the differential of cos is minus sin and therefore, that also goes away. So, you have this multiplied by 2 times alpha 1 into sin 2 theta. This is the expression that you have and we look at our original expression i is given as alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta into psi to the power of 1.6. And therefore, if you look at this term, the torque can be written as minus 1 by 1.6 multiplied by 1.6 by 2.6 multiplied by i divided by alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta this whole thing raised to the power of 2.6 by 1.6 multiplied by 2 alpha 1 sin 2 theta. So, if you now compare these two expressions, one can see that what is written inside here is nothing but psi to the power of 2.6 and this cancels out. So, what you have is minus 2 times alpha 1 sin 2 theta multiplied by psi to the power of 2.6 divided by 2.6. Let us hope it was the same expression. Now, we compare the earlier expression that we got here through the field energy route. It also is the same as what we have got here. Now, in this case it has so happened that the algebra involving the co energy route is more involved than the algebra involving the field energy route. One can choose either of these two routes, but the answer is ultimately the same. <coughs> One can, <coughs> we now have an expression for the co energy. We would like to see one more thing. The field energy is given by alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta multiplied by psi to the power of 2.6 by 2.6 and the co energy is given by this expression i to the power of 2.6 by 1.6. divided by alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 
2 theta 1 by 1.6 into 1.6 by 2.6. What we want to find out is what is this expression W f plus W c. Obviously, you would know W f plus W c must equal psi into i. We just want to verify that fact so that we are sure of what we are doing. And let us try to add those two up <coughs> W f plus W c is alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta to the power of psi into psi to the power of 2.6 divided by 2.6 plus i by alpha naught minus alpha 1 cos 2 theta to the power of 1 by 1.6 to the power of 1 by 1.6 into i to the power of 1 multiplied by 1.6 by 2.6 is what you have here and one can add these two expressions. I will leave it to you to verify that this indeed will give you an expression psi multiplied by which is the total uh, rectangular area that is contained within this curve. So, in this class, in this lecture then we have seen how to make use of the relationship between field energy and field co-energy and use those to derive an expression for the mechanical torque or the mechanical force that is there in the system. These expressions may not be useful to us in the magnetically linear case, but in the non-linear case we do not have any other way to do it. This would probably be the best way to do it. If you know the analytical expressions, one can uh, undertake the differentiation as such, but if one does not have analytical expressions to express W f or W c, one has to take recourse to some kind of numerical method, which can enable us to do all these differentiations. So, we will stop here for this uh, energy uh, looking at how one can get uh, the forces from the energy. From the next lecture onwards, we will not be looking at magnetic nonlinear systems, we will still be looking at linear systems and we will go ahead with our analysis of electrical machines which are magnetically linear. We will stop here.